Welcome to this time of worship brought to you by St Thomas of Becket Church in Ramsey, Cambridgeshire on this Remembrance Sunday. I'm Val Kilner, a retired priest who's delighted to be able to assist in the Ramsey benefice. It seems that this time of the year is a time for remembering. We remember those who have died on All Souls Day and then all the followers of Jesus on All Saints Day, to say nothing of a gunpowder plot on November the 5th. Then last Friday, the 11th, and today, we remember the cost of conflict and war, historically and today. We remember sacrifices made and being made, suffering and death damaged bodies, minds, and relationships. And we pray that there will be peace. So as we focus on God, let us pray. God, our creator, today we remember all those who have given their lives in the service of their country and for freedom. We remember all who have lost their lives in conflict, not only in the two world wars, but also in operations up to this present day. We thank you for their example of selflessness in laying down their lives for our freedom. We pray too for those who mourn the loss of their loved ones, for those who've been widowed and orphaned, for those whose hearts have been broken at the death of someone they have known and loved. Amen. And we find in words from Psalm 56 of words of hope in our God. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains tremble in the heart of the sea. The nations are in uproar and the kingdoms are shaken, but God utters his voice and the earth shall melt away. He makes wars to cease in all the world. He shatters the bow and snaps the spear and burns the chariots in the fire. Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. I was remembering that years ago when I was young, um, there used to be beauty competitions on television, you know, Miss England, Miss UK, or Miss World. And the contestants would be interviewed probably to show that they were not only pretty faces. And a common question was, if you had one wish, what would it be, what would you wish for? And there were answers usually like, oh, that everyone will be happy. And I thought, mm, if only. And many used to say, oh, that there would be peace in the world. And I thought, if only. And that was a while ago. We still live in a far from peaceful world, although we wish for one. There's still no peace between nations. There's still no peace within nations. There may well be no peace within families. For many, there is no peace within themselves. Any conflict is costly. Costly that we lose that stability in our lives. Costly in the loss of health and well being, loss of resources, and loss of life, as we remember today. 
Our first reading comes from the prophecy of Isaiah. It was written about 700 years before Jesus. Um, a letter to the people of God, words from God to his people. Um, they had been conquered and been taken into exile in Babylon. And Isaiah's message from God to his people speaks of hope, even in this turbulent situation. There will be a time when swords will be beaten into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, and when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. So words from the second chapter of Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Over the centuries, the people of God came to believe that God would intervene directly in the affairs of the world so that people could live as he intended. A key word in Jewish thinking is shalom, peace. But shalom is not necessarily just an absence of war. It is more a deep sense of well-being. And that can only come from God. As we allow him to teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths, as Isaiah said. God did intervene, has intervened, but not in the way that might have been expected. For he came to live as one of us, as Jesus, to teach us how to live in relationship with God, who is self-sacrificing love, in relationship with others, with self-sacrificing love, and in relationship with ourselves, knowing that we are of worth because of the self-sacrificing love of God for us. Jesus showed us how to deal with those we don't agree with, who don't agree with us, who stand for different things, who may even hate us. He laid down his life in fighting a battle against evil on a cross. Evil manifested in all those features of human living that cause divisions, conflict, hatred, and war. I came across this reflection on that cross of Jesus. When I stop at the cross, I see the love of God. I can't see competition. I can't see pride or prejudice or the abuse of authority. I can't see lust for power. I can't see manipulation. I can't see rage or anger or selfish ambition. I can't see hate 
or envy. I can't see bitterness or jealousy. I can't see empire building. I can't see self-importance. I can't see backstabbing or vanity or arrogance. I can see sacrifice, salvation, humility, righteousness, faithfulness, grace, forgiveness, love. When I stop at the cross, I can see the love of God. We see everything that makes for peace, shalom. Peace between nations, peace within nations, peace within families, peace within ourselves. Standing firm against evil is costly for anyone. It was for Jesus. It involves sacrifice. Jesus sacrificed his life. God himself was the perfect sacrifice. Let us confess our failings to stand firm against evil. And let us seek God's forgiveness. God of peace, forgive us when we have participated in that which turns people against each other. For fueling anger and harbouring vengeance. For not heeding your call to love one another. Inspire us never to give up on the hope that you offer us. And give us the wisdom to learn from war and desolation. May we live for the day when there will be peace. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins. Open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Isaiah's message was one of hope to a world gone wrong. Jesus died on a cross, but he came back to life after death. And that fills us with eternal hope. Evil could not destroy Jesus. And in Jesus, evil will not destroy us. And so to the second reading, which is from the last book in the Bible, Revelation, about the time when this world as we know it will end. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adored for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said this, For these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It's done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, 
and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the polluted, the murderers and the fornicators, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulphur, which is the second death. That's what we look forward to, what we hope for. A time when death will be no more. There'll be no more pain and tears. There'll be no more conflict. There will be peace. Shalom. This is the hope of all who believe in Jesus. And it will be experienced in God's time. In the meantime, God is still intervening through his Holy Spirit at work in people, in what is his world. In those who stand against evil, in those who seek to bring peace and reconciliation, in those who in their own lives, day by day, seek to live in and to live out that costly, self-sacrificing love of God in us, as we allow his Holy Spirit to work in us, to fill us with that love of God, his life. Fill us with health and well-being, shalom. <clears throat> as we know that nothing can separate us from his love in Jesus. The Holy Spirit who gives us resources to live in love and peace with others. As we remember all who have suffered and are suffering because of a lack of peace, let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war each one remembered by you and know to you. May God give peace. God, give peace. We pray for all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day. Remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. May God give peace. God, give peace. We pray for all women, children, men, whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind impenitence, the anger and hatreds of humanity. May God give peace. God, give peace. We pray for peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free. May God give peace. God, give peace. We pray for all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military, and religious. Asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. God give peace. And we pray for our sons, that we may serve God and all peoples in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering. We ask for the guidance of the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom, to give us courage, and to give us hope, now and at once. Amen.
and as we pray upon it. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle will who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted. Honour all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and always. Amen.